it's Ankur, you are on mute. Thank you all for joining. You're on mute again. Thank you all for joining us for this special webinar on uh, India's COVID second wave and the Hindu American community's response. My name is Ankur Patel. I'm the Director of Advancement for Hindu University of America, and we have a wonderful group of Hindu representatives from different organizations that are going to get into the on the ground situation and what we are doing as a community to address this, uh, this pandemic. And um, let me hand it over to president of the university, Sri Kalan Vishwanathan, who's going to get into the program a little bit and I'll give introductions of our panelists as we bring them on to give their presentations. Good, thank you so much. Uh, namaste to all of you. Well, welcome to all the participants and namaste to all the panelists. Uh, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation to join this conversation at a very, very short notice. Okay, we kind of conceived of this just about a week ago and said, why not do a conversation on the COVID-19 response? <clears throat> now, um, you know, I just want to preface by saying a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, uh, most of us have experienced uh, some loss, uh, you know, very close to home in this pandemic. You know, I know I have somebody very close in our families uh, has passed away. Uh, and uh, honestly, it has been an extraordinary time for the for the Hindu community, for the India India as a whole. And in the Hindu community in particular, uh, you know, uh, has uh, struggled to respond to this. And, and today, uh, it, there are two purposes for today. One is to recognize, acknowledge, and mildly celebrate some of the efforts that have happened in America in responding to this crisis. Uh, recognize the people who've been behind it. And also look at, uh, you know, what have been some of the challenges we faced uh, and what is the roadmap ahead, you know, considering where it is headed in terms of a third wave and so on. <clears throat> so uh, I am going to introduce uh, some specific people. Sorry, my phone was ringing. <laughs> I'd like to begin by... Uh, um, inviting Dr. Jashwan Patel to offer a few words. Uh, Jashubai Patel is on the Board of Trustees of Hindu University of America. He's also the chairperson of the Finance Committee of HUA and uh, is responsible for uh, our financial integrity. Uh, so Jashubai, if you could, uh, before you go, Ankur, you want to introduce Dr. Jashu Patel? <laughs> yeah, uh, so Dr. Jashwan Patel, you know, he's been a doctor for over 25 years and is got specific special experience in spine and pain management. He's based in San Luis Obispo, and it's been my pleasure to work with him on a range of uh, issues over these last couple of years as Hindu University of America has taken off. So Joshua, Joshua Patel ji, why don't you get into it? Yeah. So uh, Joshua, one more thing yeah. before you go. <clears throat> uh, so we have several organizations here. We have Hindu University of America, Seva International, Vishu Hindu Parishad of America, Art of Living, uh, International Association of Human Values, uh, 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 Swaminarayan, uh, BAPS, Sansta. Then we have uh, Hindu Charities uh, for America uh, and so on. So there's a number of people we're going to hear from. But uh, Jashubai, please uh, begin the proceedings here. <clears throat> you're on mute, Jashubai, you're on mute. Namaste, everybody. Uh, namaste, Bikubai, and all elders and friends. Uh, this is uh, so nice of uh, HUA to organize this, uh, this kind of event that we are not only educational institute, but we we are part of the society and we uh, uh, we work with the society. Uh, we know that uh, it was extraordinarily painful uh, condition uh, since last March. 
uh, we are going through uh, uh, different uh, uh, issues in our life. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic has uh, uh, is, is an unprecedented uh, challenges with uh, immediate uh, impact on our public and economic health. Uh, we are here to uh, share inspiring stories uh, about uh, how Hindus community uh, in USA and globally uh, has uh, uh, mobilized and responded in this moment. Uh, we have accomplished a lot uh, over the last several weeks, uh, but we still need to do a lot. And uh, it, it is very important us to uh, uh, discuss all these things with our community among us. Uh, I will uh, uh, share some uh, uh, personal, uh, 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 not a stories, but personal, personally what uh, me and my family has done as well as with the community. Uh, in the mid-April, uh, when uh, 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 the whole uh, country was struggling, uh, particularly in Gujarat. Uh, I lost my uh, cousin, I lost my uh, one of my cousin's wife and several friends. And I said that, uh, 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 what is the major issues? Uh, the main issue was oxygen. So we immediately ordered the oxygen concentrators. So we had a hard time to find uh, uh, concentrators. So we ordered concentrators in mid-April, uh, but we're waiting that uh, it will come soon. And uh, uh, can, I, can I share the slides? Okay. Yeah. See if I can. Uh, you share screen, okay? Share screen. Okay. I'm sharing screen. And I would like to go to uh, my uh, website. So I'm not sure how I can get to there. Safari. So, okay. Uh, Uh, so, uh, in, uh, in early May, we decided to, instead of waiting, uh, we should uh, uh, do something at our local place. I am from uh, uh, Visnagar Taluka in Masana district, uh, and we have a trust hospital. So, we immediately decided to uh, uh, have an oxygen plant. Uh, we decided in the first uh, week of May, and you can see this whole plant uh, uh, was ready in uh, less than 12 days. And uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, very uh, uh, high-end uh, oxygen plant. It is uh, 20 nano, uh, sorry, 20 Newton meter cube per hour. Uh, capacity plant. Uh, it has a, a PSA technology. And uh, uh, we, uh, we opened this plant on uh, May 15th. It started uh, uh, running. And our uh, Deputy Prime Minister Nitin Patel, uh, uh, there was a big uh, functions and opened this plant. And it is serving around 270 bed uh, uh, for the COVID as well as uh, 20 ICU bed. Uh, so uh, that was the fastest we could do in our area. Meantime, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, I received a call that uh, I, I was able to get the concentrators and uh, uh, we had some struggle shipping that to, uh, uh, to Gujarat. Uh, uh, so we had team and they helped us out, uh, thanks to Amnil uh, Pharmaceutical uh, for also helping us. And as soon as the consular reaches Ahmedabad, uh, uh, 100 of them, which I uh, uh, sent personally, uh, we uh, uh, took it to uh, Visnagar and we uh, opened an uh, oxygen bank because at this time, uh, we had already uh, created oxy COVID uh, 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 care unit of 100 bed uh, in Visnagar, 
but the uh, requirement of that bed was not there. So uh, we found out uh, that uh, those patients who had COVID and they are now home, they all required continuous five to 10 liter of oxygen for two to three weeks. So we immediately opened the uh, free oxygen bank and we have a team of the uh, doctors, uh, medical personals, uh, community health workers, and we already uh, give out uh, most of the concentrator to the needy people. This is the uh, uh, concentrator uh, made and assembled in USA. Uh, we also send out uh, 100 uh, uh, converters uh, because the local converters are not that efficient. Uh, uh, and can cause a problem while patient is in oxygen in uh, remote areas. Um, and then uh, there was a good news about uh, what we are doing. Uh, and there was a very positive uh, 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 response uh, from the society and they are very appreciative. Uh, during this time, we also uh, tried to uh, mobilize uh, our uh, uh, other friends uh, in USA. Uh, we had uh, a nice uh, uh, Zoom meeting with the uh, people from Nariyad area. Uh, Nariyad uh, has three hospitals and the, each hospital, we were able to uh, 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 do a few things and we uh, had the oxygen uh, plants already started uh, under construction there. Um, we had uh, uh, oxygen tanks also uh, uh, in, uh, established uh, in the uh, hospital, uh, civil hospital in, uh, in, in Nariyad. Uh, there are uh, several doctors uh, locally here. They want to send the concentrator into their areas. We have Dr. Debral in Los Angeles. Uh, he wanted to uh, uh, send the 100 concentrator in Uttarakhand. Uh, we are able to connect uh, them to uh, local uh, Seva Bharti and Sangha Karikartas and uh, 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 we are able to uh, 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 send those uh, concentrated to the needy people. So this we have done at the personal level and the friend circle level. Uh, we also have uh, 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 friends and families who have donated to Seva International. Uh, we have several challenges uh, we're going to discuss uh, uh, at the end uh, 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 what we have faced, uh, but at this point I will uh, hand over it to uh, Kalyanji. Uh, yeah. then... yeah. Jashubai, thank you. Um, you know, I we want to as we we want to keep the what we've already done brief to the point, and we want to discuss what is yet to be done. It's really far more important. But uh, uh, Jashubai, could you uh, do the honors and introduce Bikubai Patel? For a, for a brief statement from him as to what all he has done, part of his Tarsadiya Foundation, please. Yeah. So, Namaste all. Uh, Bhikkhu Bhai uh, Patel is uh, uh, one of uh, my mentors. I learned a lot from him. Uh, he has, uh, we all know, I mean, I don't think there's any, nobody, uh, everyone knows who is Bhikkhu Bhai, but uh, Bhikkhu Bhai has uh, done uh, uh, significant contributions in terms of uh, tan man dan uh, to our uh, sanskriti and our community, not only in Gujarat, but all over uh, the Bharat. Uh, in USA also he has uh, uh, significantly helped uh, 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 different organizations. Uh, Hindu University of America uh, is very fortunate to have Bhikkhu Bhai uh, in, uh, in the team of uh, Board of Overseers, as well as uh, his contribution, financial contribution to the HUA. Bhikkhu Bhai graciously uh, donated a million dollars a few months ago to the HUA, and we are thankful uh, to Bhikkhu Bhai and Tarsadia uh, Foundation. Uh, so I will uh, invite uh, Bhikkhu Bhai, uh, if you can uh, uh, tell us uh, 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 and a few words about uh, uh, about this COVID-19 situations and our uh, help from the Tarsadia Foundation. Welcome to everybody. Uh, COVID-19, we started in the April and we sent to India around 1,750 concentration machines already and they are in operation. In the future, we are doing into the, some on the plants now and we are start preparing on that one. I have nothing to say more. This is the way of my measure. Thank you. 
Thank you, Vigoy. We wanted to share a video, but I'm not sure if this sort of time is right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be prepared ready for you. If you'd like to do that at a later time, maybe we can do it as well. Is, is, are you ready from your end with the video? I can try. I mean, I've got it on the well, desktop. I can... why, don't we, why don't we come back to that? Okay, let's, okay. let's go move through the speakers and then yeah. we can share okay. your video. Okay, great. Terrific. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Arun Kankaniji from Seva International and uh, uh, one of his uh, vice presidents, uh, uh, Sri Swadesh Katoch, I believe it is. Arunji, uh, before you go, uh, Ankur, can you introduce Arun Kankani and then maybe he can share about Sudesh Katoch as well? Yes, thank you. Uh, Arun Kankani is a founding member and the current president of Seva International USA. We know Seva International is a Hindu faith based nonprofit organization, has, to, has 40 chapters across this country and is now in 25 countries across the world serving local communities through disaster recovery, education, and more. Arunji worked in the IT industry for 10 years after completing his master's from University of Mumbai. And uh, he's working as the director of inventory management and star pipe productions in Houston. But obviously we're here because of the work and the importance of Seva International and what Arunji has done. So let me just hand it off to him so he can share. Thank you, Arunji. Uh, namaste everyone. Thank you for uh, arranging this uh, webinar where we can share some of the points uh, of the efforts from Seva International. As the things unfolded late in April and uh, there were uh, requests that something needs to be done, some support is needed. And main focus was that oxygen is the main challenge. As we discussed in the team, it became apparent that task is not easy because Procuring oxygen concentrator, which was the main focus at that point of time, and the government and others also had requested that that is the number one priority, the oxygen cylinders, oxygen concentrators, the oxygen availability was the issue. So we got into it, our Atlanta president, Shrikant Gundavarapu, and vice president, Dr. Prasad Garimila, they really spearheaded this whole efforts in finding out what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, setting up the procurement team, logistics team, coordination with the whole uh, uh, team in uh, India also. And then slowly Atlanta became the hub of the activity. And within a couple of days, the entire country got into it in USA. We were already involved in the COVID support in uh, USA. so. The work was already going on in USA in multiple cities in distribution food, in supporting the uh, COVID the relief efforts in terms of vaccination with FEMA. And now this additional uh, urgency was very evident. The whole team got engaged. We also engaged our partners across the country in USA in last one and a half years as we were fighting the COVID at home here in USA. We had partnered with more than 500 organizations across the country. We reached out to them, we launched the campaign, and uh, initially we did not realize how impactful this thing could be or how we, it, 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 become very, it became very apparent that every family in USA was impacted directly or indirectly. So the people wanted to do something, wanted to uh, help in some form and uh, this helplessness was also there that very very little can be done from here for uh, from so much of distance and uh, Seva International's team got their trust more than 125,000 people supported donated and in Bharat the our Seva International team in India Bharat there also went out of their way and scaled up very very quickly to meet the requirement with the partners organization across the country. We decided our focus will be reduce the rush to the hospital because due to the significant high number of uh, people going to hospital, the whole healthcare system was under stress and was not, not able to cope with the situation. So we decided to support through COVID centers and isolation centers and uh, send all the concentrators across the country in different states and uh, help 
in this reducing the rush to the hospital. We are very grateful for organizations like IAP, IT Serve, and many other aims for Seva, Chinma Mission, RSMA. Many, many organizations, all the organizations came out and supported, and we were able to send the oxygen concentrators very, very quickly from here. We were able to initial efforts were to procure from outside, and but we soon realized that the most trusted source will be at home. We found the manufacturers in USA and with their help, we were able to procure, manufacture and send concentrators to India. This was our major effort in sending the concentrators across more than 20 states and through these COVID centers and uh, isolation centers where urgency, based on the urgency where the need was there, India team was deciding where to send, how to distribute. And uh, in spite of multiple hiccups and challenges that we had during the distribution, we are happy that uh, now across the country, the oxygen concentrators are used. Along the way, there were multiple other things we found as we were progressing. The need of uh, essential kit was there, medicine kit was there, food kit was there. As the things unfolded, we also changed our strategy and we uh, put our uh, resources and efforts there, oxygen concentration, uh, oxygen generation plant. Also at a later stage, it became clear that it, that would be a really useful thing to make, to help this infrastructure across the country. So now we are supporting in the rural and tribal areas, especially second and third tier cities with the focus on nonprofit hospitals and organizations to set up uh, nearly 100 oxygen generation plant across the country. We are also, as the things are progressing, we are also working on other things which we'll be sharing as the things progresses and uh, we reach there. Here I will also introduce uh, Swadesh Atoji from Atlanta, who is our National Vice President of Disaster Relief. He is uh, not very, very energetic and had been involved with SEVA since the beginning and had supported in more than 20 major disasters across the world, not only in USA, across the world in different places where SEVA International has supported. Uh, Swadesh, would you like to add uh, any pointers? No, thank you. Dhanyabad, everyone. Uh, namaste, everyone. Uh, Dhanyabad, Arunji. So I think uh, for us, uh, when we started working in April, uh, as Arunji just said, uh, we started working on disaster uh, during earthquake in uh, Gujarat. Uh, and since then, the, in US, our first was Katrina when hit uh, US, uh, like in 2003. So since then, we are working on disasters. And this disaster on COVID, we are working since last year. So we were already, I will say, prepared, maybe not in an oxygen level or other, but we were already working on the ground earlier in US and uh, India also. So when this oxygen, uh, uh, this uh, deficiency came in India, there were uh, you know, a lot of oxygen needed, hospital beds were not, people were not getting the hospital beds and all that. So immediately we started procuring uh, concentrators uh, and uh, we started partnering with various organizations, including UPS, Airlink, and various other organizations we partnered with so that we can send it as soon as possible. I, I want to add a few things which are, uh, uh, which were very important uh, for us is uh, when we were about to procure uh, concentrators, we decided there are many organizations, hospitals, and government, Indian government will try to buy in India, or they will try to procure from China. So we decided that we will procure in US only. So 99%, whatever the money we uh, got in donation, we spent the money in US dollars only, the way we got it. Um, other thing is, positive point is, uh, from 25 countries, Seva International has raised funds or send some kind of help to India during this time. So it's not uh, from US only, but we are working from across the uh, countries all over the world. And uh, just want to add is uh, we when we partner with like organization like API, and then we came up with the idea of e-global doctors because we have created a team of doctors in India and US. So e-global doctor was where people were looking for help from here. So we created help desk also. So in India, we have 300, around 300 volunteers working only on help desk. And uh, in US, there were more than 100 volunteers working on help desk. So a lot of people were calling us in US. Their relatives are in India not getting beds or uh, 
not, not getting help on the ground. Maybe they're looking for oxygen concentrators or we are so through this COVID Seva website that we created at that time. So a lot of people, there was a, they can get the information from there. So our team, 100 plus volunteers here, they were helping these people that how to connect to this COVID Seva in India, how to get connected to, how to find a hospitals where they have beds, all those things we were helping from there. So many things happened at because of that. And uh, one more thing that uh, uh, through this help desk, uh, I think uh, um, the, the partnership that we created, not only with corporations, but as well as the various temples, they are supporting, they are raising funds, donating through Seva International for these things. Um, so I think, and then a lot of linguistic organizations, uh, we are trying to partner with them. Many already partner with us and uh, we are trying to partner with more so that we can reach more deeper in India. Already 25 plus states that I have data, maybe two, three days old data. So we have already, some kind of help has already reached around 25 states or maybe a little more, maybe now by this weekend. So that kind of help we are doing on the ground, the remotest areas, including maybe Jammu, maybe Uttarakhand, remote, remotest area, Northeast states. It's amazing how our team on ground is working. And that is also in the third week of April when a lot of our SEVA volunteers were from the national team in India, but themselves were down with COVID and they were working from their rooms. So I think it's amazing things are happening as a community, how we are coming together to support this initiative. Yeah. So uh, one quick thing, you know, uh, Clearly, Seva, Seva International had, uh, uh, you know, had the prior uh, sort of prior years of experience in mobilization, which was certainly helpful. And I, I was particularly very inspired at how fast things moved with Seva International. So, may I ask you, Arunji, how many, how much money have you raised, and what's your target? Uh, we, with the kind support and. Uh, generous donations from all our supporters. So far, we have raised more than $26 million. So we have already spent more than $15 million in equipments and oxygen concentrators and uh, ventilators, etc. And now, major effort, our plan is on the uh, going for oxygen generation plan. Across, this, across the country, reach out to 100,000 villages with the essential kit. These type of major initiatives will need more funding and we are targeting to raise up to $40 million to support all these uh, initiatives, which as the COVID is expanding in rural and tribal areas, preparing the country, prepare the, preparing the villages for that is our main focus now and also supporting the infrastructure. Thank you so much, Charan. It's very, very inspiring how much... Uh, work has gotten done. <laughs> Let me move on to the next uh, uh, organization. I'd like to invite uh, Tiku Patel from uh, uh, Swaminarayan community, uh, BAPS. Tiku ji, uh, you would have to introduce yourself since uh, we, don't get, we didn't get a bio from you, please. So if you could kindly uh, unmute yourself. Or Ankur, did you get a get Just a, a brief one. So uh, Tiku Boy Patel Kashap Patel is a cardiologist in Atlanta, Georgia for the past 15 years. And he's done a lot of volunteer work with Bob's and Bob's Charities, again, over the last two decades. So glad to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, very good. And, and bravo to Seva International. Those, uh, those numbers and those efforts are truly all inspiring and, and they're an inspiration for the rest of us as well. So keep up the great work. Um, so for, for many of you who are familiar with BAPS, but just a, a quick synopsis of BAPS Charities. Uh, it's, uh, we've been around for approximately three to four decades um, and we're present in five continents with tens of thousands of volunteers uh, on the ground. And that ground presence and the network that exists uh, has been vital for our uh, COVID-19 uh, efforts. Our focus has historically been, you know, health awareness, uh, health education, humanitarian efforts, environmental services, and community involvement and empowerment. Uh, very early in the pandemic uh, throughout the world, but specifically in India, uh, BAPS, uh, through its network of hospitals and health facilities, started caring uh, for patients, you know, regardless of the ability uh, of them to pay. 
uh, regardless of income, uh, started caring for these patients. Er, the first wave of, of COVID in India uh, was not that significant and the, the lockdown and the governmental measures were very successful. Uh, but as the second wave, uh, the second surge really hit India, uh, we BAPS really fortified and, and, and refocused its efforts uh, globally here in North America, uh, Europe, uh, the Middle East and Africa and the Far East to really provide the resources, funds uh, and the direct medical care uh, throughout all of India. Uh, uh, so with Gujarat, uh, Delhi, Rajasthan, so on and so forth. Uh, so our ongoing um, fundraising through our wide network that already existed because of, uh, of, of several years of, of doing charitable work, we had a very large network. So when there was a need, we were able to tap into that network and reach out to thousands, tens of thousands of volunteers, uh, well-wishers, uh, as well as other uh, supporters who were willing to, to provide whatever support uh, was needed, whether it was resources, whether it was financial. Uh, one of the challenges we faced very early on was we had a significant number of healthcare professionals who have cared for COVID patients. I'm sure many of the other doctors here on this call and healthcare professionals on this call, in the last year, we have all become COVID experts in one way or another, whether it's in the ICU, whether it's in an outpatient setting or and so on and so forth. But we had dozens and dozens of healthcare professionals who wanted to provide their expertise uh, to our healthcare facilities in India. Uh, now the challenge was on the ground uh, staff and volunteers in India made it very clear, we don't need more doctors. We don't need more doctors. What we need is oxygen. What we need is medical equipment. What we need is PPE. Um, so we really had to redirect a lot, of, a lot of that effort and that energy to say, hey, look, this is what we need. This is what's needed on the ground. Uh, as be, has been eloquently stated by so many of the, of the other panelists, uh, there was a, it's a dire situation and where people are dying without something as basic as oxygen. Uh, so we really focused on that. And to date, uh, as of June 2nd at least, approximately 90 metric tons of oxygen uh, have, been, um, uh, have been delivered to India. Uh, approximately 1,200 to 1,300 oxygen concentrators have also been sent. In addition to that, we have been actively working on a procurement of oxygen generators as well. Uh, has, as has been so uh, uh, well stated before, that is really the key. The infrastructure, the medical infrastructure in India is sorely lacking. And day-to-day -day, uh, healthcare you can get away with most of the resources that exist at a really substandard level for what we're accustomed to. But when a ma major catastrophe like this uh, occurs, as we've all seen, unfortunately, uh, it, is, it is pushed to the brink of collapse. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so, you know, the, the, the resources we've sent because of that ground presence of volunteers and the network that already existed, we have been able to support uh, uh, BAPS hospitals in Gujarat primarily, uh, that there are four hospitals that already exist. In addition to those four hospitals, we created a temporary uh, uh, field hospital with an additional 500 beds. So that's about a thousand beds. So far, we've taken care of uh, about 4,500 uh, patients who have actively had COVID. In addition to that, outside of Gujarat, at an additional 233 facilities, we've delivered uh, medical resources, oxygen, uh, medications, and PPE to Delhi, Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, so on and so forth. Um, in addition to the medical support, one of the things uh, that we focused on was the real humanitarian support that was needed. Uh, so for example, you can take care of the patient that's dying on a ventilator who has COVID. Um, however, what about their family? What about their children? What about the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who pretty much lost their livelihood in the blink of an eye when the government shut down? I mean, we know what the GDP of India did uh, with the government lockdown and how much the economy was affected. So in addition to all the medical efforts, we've also focused on uh, humanitarian support. And that includes hot meals, that includes dry food goods in the tens of thousands of tons, uh, that includes emotional support, that includes other necessities of daily living uh, that people really need just to be able to have a sense of normalcy, just to have a, the ability uh, to have a sense of comfort and that things are going to be okay on the other side. Um, so, you know, the country has been devastated and I'm sure all of us have been touched uh, by some kind of loss. So uh, we have really tried to focus on the medical aspect, but in addition to that, the humanitarian and the human aspect as well. Great, terrific. Uh, uh... Thank you so much, uh, Tiku, Tiku Bhai Patel. 
let me now move to another Patel. So I've got, I've got to acknowledge the disproportionate number of Patels on this in this conversation. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, uh, it is a tribute to that community, uh, not only in terms of its ability to respond, but it's the big heart that it takes to really take on something like this. Um, so Nimisha Patel, over to you, to uh, from Vishwa Hindu Parishad. Uh, so Ankur, do you have an introduction for her? Yeah, so Nimisha Patel is a small business owner, director of COVID Seva at World Hindu Council of America. She holds a bachelor of science degree and also a master's in healthcare. She works in supply chain management, uh, supply chain industries for the past 10 years. She's a selfless volunteer for Hindu community and Hindu temples for many years. She's also a social activist for the Indian community in, uh, in the United States, a student learner at college, and she's the mother of two little girls. And in her free time, she's doing all this kind of work. So thank you for joining us today, Nimisha Ji. Hello, uh, Namaskar everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, myself is Namisha Patel and I work uh, right now as a director of COVID Seva on behalf of uh, World Hindu Council of America. So when in April, you know, the uh, second surge has hit and we all have realized that Bharat or Matru Bhumi need us. That's when, you know, World Hindu Council of America, we all got together and we came up with, you know, uh, this different, different plans to help out our Matru Bhumi. And that's when, you know, our, uh, let me actually share my screen and you guys will have a better picture. Okay, just finding it out. Give me a minute. No. All right, I'll just have it open. For some reason, I'm not uh, able to share my screen and not getting my files. Not sure why this is happening. So Nimisha, why don't you get ready? We will move on to another speaker, okay? Okay, uh, I'd, I'd or like actually, to, like I, to... I, actually, I got it, I got it. Okay. If you give me one second. I don't wanna waste any more time. All right, so you guys will be able to see it now, right? So from our, you know, chapter president, uh, VHPA Chicago chapter president, Neerabhai Patel's help and one of our volunteer uh, community we leader. Are not, uh, sorry, we're not, we're not seeing you. Uh, what do you think? We are showing? seeing your folders, but not uh, not the screen. Yeah, the presentation. Okay. You may get too many tips. You just have to stop sharing and reshare it. Then it will be okay. Okay, let me try that. I'm so sorry. Is it good now? No, it's not. <coughs> okay, I, I'll just I'll just read it out to you. No worries. Okay. So, so then you can stop sharing your screen. Oh, there you go. You can see something. Is it good now? Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, as, as soon as the second surge hit and uh, we all have realized that our Matru Bhumi need us, we came up with this plan and our chapter, Chicago chapter president, Mr. Nero Bhai Patel, uh, our community leader uh, with the help of, you know, community leader Nimesh Bhai Jani and the national secretary Amitabh Mittal, they all have come up with this plan to send three military grade heavy duty oxygen concentrator that can create like 120 liter prati minute uh, Medi medical grade oxygen. And we have decided to send that from Chicago to India. Uh, we did that actually in a six days, uh, all this uh, buying, 
and logistic and delivering process takes six days. Uh, we donated those to NDRF, National Disaster Resource, and uh, they are now working perfectly fine and placed in Nariyad, Surat, and Varanasi. Uh, besides that, uh, VHPA Chicago chapter has donated $15,000 to Seva account uh, towards cow dung cremations. We also have donated $3,000 to ABVP to help out in uh, meal plans and any some other other plans. As you can see, uh, actually Air India has helped us huge uh, to deliver these uh, machines to India. They have helped us big in a logistic. Uh, I remember that uh, when machines have reached to Delhi, uh, from Delhi to Gujarat, it was a commercial cargo. It, it couldn't fit in commercial cargo. So even government of India has helped us out. And, uh, you know, they, they have a, uh, a aviation minister has done help us out to fit this cargo and they come up with this dream dream pipeline uh, uh, idea and we have delivered those in uh, Gujarat. Uh, as you can see, they were placed in three different places. Uh, Mr. Home Minister, Home Minister Shri Pradeep C. Jadeja is visiting our machine site. MP of Kheda District, C. Devi Ching Chauhan, and MLA Pankaj Bhai Desai, who supported our effort in Seva. Besides that, uh, our Florida VHPA chapter, uh, Broward County Indian Association, they have donated 200 oxygen concentrator. Singapore has donated $68,000 uh, for ventilator to India. VHPA National has donated so far $238,254 for COVID Seva in Bharat. And with that, we have sent 225 oxygen concentrator to Gujarat. 50 out of 225 is placed in Ahmedabad. Uh, we also have received another $100,000 donation. We have spent 75,000 out of that in a cow dung cremation machine and other 25 to 30K has been, you know, uh, being helped out to those uh, children's, those meal plans and other, other projects. Uh, recently, we have donated this 25 concentrator to Shamlaji Hospital in Rajasthan. Uh, Support a Child is also a part of uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America. They have personally donated 1,000 small units of oxygen concentrator. Uh, they, we have donated hundred and more than 120 cow dung crematorium machine. So as we were, you know, like when in the April when uh, COVID second surge hit, we all have realized that, uh, you know, oxygen is the main need, ventilator is the main need. So in the, in the beginning, we all have focused on oxygen concentrators and we all have focused on ventilators. But as time goes on, we eventually started realizing that, yes, cremation is also uh, issue, you know, so that's when we come up with this uh, cow dung cremation machine plans, so that can help in a cremation, and exactly why we have donated 120 cow dung crematorium machine to Bharat Kalyan Pratishtan. For that, we have collected 145,000 fund. We almost signed 120,000, and we still pledge just 20,000. Now, as we are going down, now things are getting little better. So we are realizing, but we are realizing that many childrens have lost uh, their, you know, parents, many women, many wives has lost their, you know, husband, or I would say bread earner of the family. So now VHPA is working on to find a permanent uh, project that can help the people in India to, you know, help these people, especially COVID affected kids and women to, you know, to get we are working on the project that can get them a monthly income or, you know, some type of works that can help them survive this. So these are the work we have so far done. Besides that, we have uh, helped, uh, we have provided logistical help to many sister organizations like SEVA, HSS, ACL, and Vishwa Umia Foundation. All right, very good. Very good, Namisha. Thank you so much. Uh, you can stop sharing your screen. Yes. Okay. So next I would like to invite uh, uh, Sri Madhu Khadari from the International Association of Human Values, as well as uh, Sri Vinesh uh, Virani from the Art of Living Foundation. Uh, both are uh, in organizations inspired by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. So over to you, Madhu Kadari. Um, yeah, so Madhu Kadari has been volunteering with the Art of Living Foundation since 1995, sits on the board of International Association of Human Values, as Kalyanji said. 
um, delivers Sudarshan Kriya breathe meditation programs to schools, universities, veterans, prisons, and raises funds for disaster and trauma relief, education, and environmental projects, and both organizations, as Kalanji said, from uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji. So uh, let me just hand it to Madhuji. Namaste. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kalyanji. Thank you, Ankurji. And thank you for the Hindu University of America for having us. Um, really inspiring to hear um, everyone speak and the work that has been done, Seva International, BAPS, VHP, and other organizations. Commendable work. Um, so really, at the times of these, it is uh, very inspiring to see how people come together and how, you know, uh, across the world, uh, people come and uh, contribute uh, to the, as the need um, comes. So having said that, I don't want to repeat too much because it's a very similar work that we have done, right? It's uh, the needs were the same, the, the, the kind of work is about the same. Uh, so just to give a brief, uh, you know, we uh, Art of Living and International was, uh, Association for Human Values. So we, since the COVID started last year, we have been doing work across the world in many countries, especially in India and here. In India, the work that we did last year was mainly in uh, distributing food and ration kits because that's what the need was. And we continued after the lockdown uh, in focusing more on medical supplies. And, uh, in, and in US, we were doing mainly PPE kits, uh, especially in the areas where there was need like New York. And also in many prisons, we were able to distribute, uh, you know, because there was a lot of uh, cases that were coming from there. And we were also providing the uh, programs, uh, stress management and anxiety and uh, relief programs, the Sudarshan Kriya programs, uh, to frontline workers in the United States. We did it in partnership with many hospitals, the Children's National Hospital and Georgetown. Uh, so many frontline workers were able to benefit from it. And that's continuing um, because they were really, um, you know, were in the front and a lot of stress that they went through uh, and still going through in, in India, especially. So uh, coming to the current situation in India, um, you know, just like everyone shared, it was the oxygen uh, concentrators, ventilators that were needed. And we did the same thing, shipping from here. Uh, thanks to our partners uh, like United Airlines, Air India, that have been very helpful in getting them across uh, for free of cost. So in terms of logistics, yes, I mean, uh, just like, you know, anything, uh, it, the demand was so huge. Uh, the, the supply was, you know, obviously not there. Uh, so we had some hiccups, whether it was uh, procuring or uh, transportation or clearing of the customs, but those were, I would say, in the in the large scale, kind of uh, not big. They're kind of expected. Everyone was trying to do their best. Uh, really, uh, very grateful to all the uh, institutions uh, across India who have been helpful. Uh, the governments, the district administrations, um, you know, they were very helpful uh, in getting the supplies across. So I feel everyone did their best. Um, you know, so uh, we, I mean, Art of Link Foundation being across India. So it was very easy for us to collect the needs from different areas. And then based on that, we were able to, you know, once the supplies came there, we were able to get it out immediately. Um, so that was one of the advantages that we had across the states. You know, we knew exactly where, where the needs were and where we needed to distribute. So there was really not much time from the time of procuring to the time of delivery. Uh, so having said that, I mean, the future needs, obviously, the, you know, the oxygen concentrators, like uh, say, uh, Arunji mentioned, I think long term, you know, going for oxygen generation plants, uh, be good. Uh, we're also focusing more on ventilators, parameter monitors, PPE supplies has now become also, especially in the rural areas, there, there are requesting for more PPE supplies. And uh, we are also doing a couple of things, which is the immunity kits, uh, Ayurveda based immunity kits to help boost immunity. So, you know, one thing is post after having COVID, but if prevention is the best thing that we can do, right? So that's something that we have been doing and we'll continue doing that. Uh, obviously the next important thing that we need to do is the vaccination 
which I think everyone knows. Uh, so that's something we are working on. Um, so this and uh, you know food distribution is something that we will continue to do. So these are the main things um, I would say broad broadly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I feel uh, grateful to be part of this, having the opportunity to work for the organization, volunteer for the organization, and do our bit. And I'd like to really, I don't see Vinesh Virani here, uh, but uh, you know, it's one of volunteers who did an amazing work in uh, procuring the supplies from different vendors, talking to different uh, you know airline companies, and getting the shipments across. Uh, don't see Kalyanji, he's here, but I uh, just want to recognize uh, his incredible work. It's not just for Art of Living. He really helped many organizations, including API and other organizations, uh, small organizations that needed help to get things across. So, right. Uh, terrific, uh, Madhuri. Thank you so much. Um, we now go to Dr. Raj Bayani. Um, Ankur, you want to introduce Dr. Raj Bayani? You're on mute, Ankur. Yeah, so Dr. Raj Bayani is the president of the Federation of Indian Physicians Associations. He's a community leader in the New York region. He's a physician leader, obviously, and he's involved as a trustee and founder in several organizations, such as the AAPI. He's a past president of the AAPI, Asian American Pacific Islanders, um, QLI, and he's, and he's going to get into how their organization sent over 3,000 concentrators to India. Dr. Um, Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's an uh, honor to meet all the panelists as well as the wonderful program organized by you all. So, uh, you know, Federation of Indian Physician Association has followed the same path which others have done. As soon as we realized there is a shortage of oxygen concentrator, we reached out our several friendly organizations, we, including the Seva International, thanks to Kankaniji and Sridharji. They also guided us how to procure the concentrators. And then we uh, partner with the several uh, chapter physicians uh, in uh, Washington, DC, Tampa, California, New York region, as well as the non-physician charitable organizations, Sakti Sai Trust, uh, and several others which became partner with us. And then together we were able to send more than 3000 of the, the concentrators. We are still sending more as the uh, now need is more in the rural areas. We have partnered now with uh, Ekal Vidyalaya because Ekal Vidyalaya has now almost 100,000 schools in rural area in India. And that's where the next uh, burnt of COVID is happening as in uh, bigger cities, the oxygen supplies have been adequate the more problems as we see and the more deaths are happening in rural areas where the resources are very limited. So that is where our next focus is. And uh, we also have partnered with Wills Global Foundation and we have what we call telehealth platform. Uh, we have over 300 physicians who are volunteers uh, as a part of this network and a couple of face-to-face uh, <clears throat> -face health and evolve core these uh, uh, apps and web-based telehealth platforms we're using. And uh, the uh, other things which we are doing is the, we're creating what we call as community, community isolation centers. So all these uh, various areas in rural area where the schools are of ACL, they will be converted into the community center because schools are closed. And we are providing the pulse oximeter, temperature probes, uh, and uh, all other uh, supplies which they need. We also send uh, in Iroli region some concentrator recently because Iroli has been big hit and they don't have any resources along with the Ekal Vidyalaya. So uh, the, as everybody else, we are uh, doing the same as we are doing. And thank you everybody for your great work and being a partner with this. We have sent uh, concentrators in Rajasthan, Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, more majority of them also have gone to Gujarat and uh, UP. And some of them now are going to the uh, Tripura region. So I think this is our synopsis of what work we are doing and what's more to come. Thank you, everybody. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Raj Bayani. Um, I just want to uh, say a word of uh, appreciation and acknowledgement for all the people who have contributed, who have stepped up on this moment of need and done the very best that they can. Uh, you know, I think everybody deserves the greatest uh, acknowledgement and appreciation. Uh, I want to move to another segment now, just to sort of look at the future. You know, um, what do we see uh, as being important moving forward? Uh, what have we learned from this experience? And, and what can we do better as we move forward? So th this will be a sort of an open discussion. Uh, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna go in sequence. So anybody who wishes to step in and offer a perspective uh, about the future, I would welcome their, uh, their thoughts on this. So as, uh, I will just add to what I just said earlier. The future of issues are gonna be in rural area. So we need to focus our efforts in rural India uh, for community isolation centers and supplies. That's number one. And number two is the third wave, if it comes in, it will be affecting children. So India needs to get equipped and ready for having adequate supplies if the, uh, because vaccination wise, the children are the least vaccinated population. And as we see the virus is getting smarter, initially it affected only older people. Now the currently it's affecting middle age and younger generation. And now next wave is possible to affect children. So we need to be very much cognizant about this and hopefully we can get this vaccine approval for children. And before the next wave hits, the children's uh, need to be vaccinated. Arunji. This is Arun. If I can share uh, four points as we are from Seva International over the last month have discussing and evolved or focusing on now. Uh, one is the oxygen generation plant, which really meets the need of the rural and tribal areas, oxygen capability. So infrastructure gets supported. The second thing is this uh, rural areas. Uh, we are now already started distributing identifying and working with the partners or partnerships and partner organizations to reach to more than 100,000 villages. Villages act as a community, as a family. So instead of reaching out to each individual or family in the village, we are making a village as a unit and providing them basic uh, kit, which will have thermometer, oximeter, glucometer, and then 10 kits of the medicines. So that way, that whole village can be supported through this basic uh, information, basic material, as well as identifying, creating a network of Arogya Prerak, which will become our, con our uh, means or medium to get the information, right information, education, awareness, as well as supplies to the rural India. So that is a very, very massive effort and we already have started and we are hoping in the next uh, one to two months, we will be able to really reach and supply the material. And in the coming months, we'll be really able to institutionalize this setup. So that way on the ongoing basis, we will also be focusing on really how to engage the serpent of the villages, because if they are aware and they are educated, they can also get the benefit of various governmental schemes which government will be providing them the help. So this way, this is the second part which is supporting the rural India in a big way rural and tribal uh, India. The third aspect is the children. Uh, many families are going to have significant financial challenges are already having it and the children education can be significantly impacted. So we have already started working on identifying such families. We know that the government is supporting children education for the where both the parents have passed away. But what about other families where the parents have not uh, died, but have significant families have incurred significant financial challenges. So those are the children we are now trying to identify, figuring out how we will create a, a structure to educate such children. We are as I presently our estimate is there could be five to 10,000 such children. We are still gathering the data and trying to now set up that uh, structure. And the last part, if I can mention, is our focus is really to create a nationwide network to prepare the disaster relief. 
with all this oxygen generation plant equipment that we are supplying across the country, from beginning we had taken this approach that if somebody wanted to send to only one area or one hospital, we said that right now our ability and capability is limited. We will let that decision be made by the India team who knows where the situation is changing daily and that where they are aware of where the urgency is. So that was our stand at the beginning. So we were able to reach our supplies and effort across the country where there were need to the helping these isolation centers and COVID centers directly so that with the rush to the hospital was reduced. Now that we have crossed that stage, we are now forming the regional groups also, so that the people who have want to support any specific state, so we will be also able to help them. And through that, across the country, we will be able to create a very good network of hospitals and community organization to prepare for the disaster so that with the future damages can be minimized, can be mitigated. So this approach, which we call as the T model, the integrated approach to disaster relief, where the immediate expanse of the services across the bandwidth is very important and which we have done through the oxygen concentrators or the digital help desk or supplying the uh, food as well as uh, uh, medicine kits, but then the vertical part which is going deep so that we're taking some sub actions which will mitigate the damages in the future. Those aspects like vaccination drive, vaccination is the only permanent solution, no, although not the foolproof, but that is the real solid solution for this uh, pandemic. Then this oxygen generation plant which will be creating the infrastructural support and this institutionalizing disaster relief by having a partner network in India. So Seva International in India is our primary vehicle of uh, executing this. Over here in USA, to the, uh, uh, in the last four years since uh, Harvey, we have been engaged in the disaster relief locally directly and we had been engaged in the, with the FEMA and the local institutions are and understanding a lot of <clears throat> how the preparedness or the building resiliency is also important and those knowledge and that information sharing also we are, are trying to do from here so that way we are future safe uh, for this. Uh, Dr. Prasad Garimiraji is also here who is based in Atlanta and he is our main guide as far as the medical support and medical dimensions are concerned and he has been instrumental in this telehealth setup with the RP and the guiding these dimensions we are also working on how this counseling, which was focused on, again, reduce the rush to the hospital, directly communicating to the uh, people and guiding them and reducing the panic, now can be extended through the other medical uh, in, uh, institutions like National Medical Organization or Aragya Bharti and other institutions which are there in India, collaborating directly with the doctors with them, the doctors over there, for both these aspects. One is critical care physicians or the junior doctors who are there in the rural area trying to provide any infrastructural support in terms of equipment as well as in terms of training, as well as having this mechanism where the counseling for the people can also be done by doctors here so that way the pressure on the doctors in India can be reduced. Prasad, you'd like to add anything on that dimension? Uh, thank you, Raul. Thank you, Arunji. Um, sorry, I could not join earlier. Um, so this uh, uh, critical hour management is one of the major problems in rural India. One third of the population lives in urban area, two thirds is in the rural areas. And uh, there is only 28% of the population that these uh, urban physicians are supporting. This, so there is a huge variation between the um, uh, between the healthcare delivery problems in India. So with that in mind, one of the concepts that we are focusing on right now is that the critical hour management. If there is a problem, a, a medical problem in rural India, so they go to the local places, but they are usually sent about 40 to 80 kilometers to reach to a place where their um, 
their medical problem is taken care of. In that process, at least one fourth of the people are not making it. So this is a problem even when we were there in, in India when I was training, and it is still going on right now. And uh, with this uh, COVID, it has opened up the wounds. And uh, what we are planning to do is like uh, adapt and uh, do a pilot project where we can train, um, um, basically meet the needs. There are three needs over here. One is the knowledge of the people over there, doctors and then the nurses and then the technicians in the rural community. The second is the equipment. And the third one is the support. So we have made a plan for all three of those things, training, support, and uh, um, equipment so that uh, we can at least uh, prove the concept in the next uh, six weeks to eight weeks or so, so that this uh, small entity with a limited amount of resources can at least take care of the doc, uh, patient population who are in that critical hour. And then they can be transported to the nearby places. Right now, there is no critical hour support and people are dying in that critical hour. Being wow. in the critical care field, we thought that is one of the uh, very important things that we can work on. Thank you again for the time. Wonderful, Dr. Prasad. So uh, terrific. Uh, any, any other uh, additional points, uh, you know, without uh, repeating what has already been said, any, any, anybody wants to contribute towards? Uh, I, I want to, yeah, Lendi. So I want to add just what uh, Arunji already told from Seva perspective, but I think uh, uh, when disaster happens, it's very bad for the society, but at the same time, it also brings opportunity to for us to come together as organizations and the way we are working together this time, um, I think, uh, but I want to say from my pers personal views is um, we should make this as an opportunity to come together, be work together uh, for a common cause to provide this uh, help, not only to India, but many other countries, like we are already working in Nepal, Trinidad, we are about to work in Suriname and uh, Guyana. So, so like, I think this is a, we should take it as an opportunity when we are developing the infrastructure. Um, so including these countries also in our sphere and work together in this hour. Very good. Thank you. Any, anybody else wants to add anything? Yeah, I just want to add one thing. I mean, uh, Ranji and others have mentioned. So just uh, one thing post COVID we see is the, I mean, during COVID and post COVID is the mental health. I mean, there's a lot of loss, people affected, um, you know, because of all the things that have happened. I think that's something we will need to address, um, you know, post pandemic. I mean, it's current and post pandemic is the mental health and counseling that we need to do in a mass scale. Uh, especially given that rural areas are affected a lot uh, now. Um, it's something that we are looking into also right now, uh, but I feel that's one thing that we, we can put as an additional future thing that we need to address. Yeah. yeah very good. Uh, did uh, Viren Virani join or did he not join? No, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're, no, I, um, I, I'm, I seeing two, I'm seeing two Madhu Kadaris. That's why I, I, know, I don't know. Somehow <laughs> I, I have to go through Madhu's link. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it's a great job everybody did. All the organizations really work very hard and get things done. And we support it when we need to. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing we must um, convey this uh, to our government in India is that um, coordination. Um, we have uh, so many different messages coming through. Uh, for one example, GST. So GST, um, there is a GST, there is no GST. You send it to Red Cross, there is no GST. You send it to the government hospital, you need a nodal officer signature. And after nodal officer sign, four months later, he will come to audit. If the machines are not there, then you have to pay the GST plus penalty. So it's so much confusion. So our organization decided to pay the GST for each and every product that we send from America. And procuring, another problem. Uh, I don't know why we have to uh, rush to China. You know, we, everybody was blind faith sending the money. And I know personally three or four organizations lost the money, sending the money to China. And um, I, I would request Indian government to get in and look into that uh, 
uh, get that money come back from China to people who lost it. And I know one person took the personal loan and sent the money to uh, buy some concentrator to China and he lost his money, you know. Mm -hmm. So that thing, and then we need a coordination team in India with the government help. They should have a, like a disaster management committee or something where all these people can go, where, where they know now, after this, I'm pretty sure they know that Seva International, BAP, IHV, those are all in, uh, organization can be work with them and get some ideas and um, ready for anything happen in the future because uh, natural disasters is nobody's hand, but at least we should have a, a department which is prepared to do some work, you know. That is my suggestion. Very good. So, uh, you know, um, Clearly, uh, the the organizations uh, representing the conversation uh, today uh, is not the full picture. You know, there are many many other organizations that have been contributing and participating, and uh, certainly we've not been able to gather everybody. Uh, it would be it would have been impossible, and the landscape is obviously very fragmented. Um, you know, I I hope that. Uh, as we move forward, uh, like uh, Vinesh Ji said, we're able to better coordinate going forward. I want to give a few minutes, a couple of minutes to Dr. Yellowji Mirajkar, who's working on an important uh, health initiative in India called uh, Ahara Kranti. Uh, Dr. Yellowji Mirajkar is uh, on the board of overseers of Hindu University of America. And he has taken this very personally uh, to bring uh, principles of better nutrition uh, in, in India to proactively address the health-related uh, concerns. So, Yelaji, just uh, very sh briefly. Yeah, can share thank you. Thank you, Kalyanji. First of all, uh, all of us, one way or the other, are impacted uh, directly and indirectly. Uh, my condolences to all those cases. Similarly, my hats off to your efforts about in terms of supporting uh, the people from uh, uh, Dharma Bhumi, uh, Matra Bhumi, either way. So coincidentally, in the month of March, we started an initiative called Ahara Kranti. Let me share my screen. It's only three slides, not more than that. So the whole idea behind this uh, Ahara Kranti is that can we consume food as medicine? Uttama Ahara, especially locally grown, cultivated food items for ourselves. So why? because nutrition is important from embryo to end of life. The most important aspect in this is also the inherent immunity that needs to be developed. It doesn't matter whether it is a pregnancy state or the newly born child or the expecting mother or lactating mother, for anybody for that matter. So the whole idea in this scheme of things is, can we treat food as our friend? You know, we want to treat anyone just the way they want us to treat. In this scenario, uh, can we use uh, food and treat it as our friend? So what we want to really accomplish in this awareness campaign is, one is increasing awareness in individuals. Second, increasing in the institutions, whether it is research or academy or government bodies, to help support today's situation. Probably you'll be surprised to know that today India produces four times the food it consumes. Unfortunately, it is not balanced, mostly carbohydrate rich. So can we think of bringing the awareness so that they will be able to produce the food in a balanced fashion that is Krushi Pradhan. But most importantly, the three dimensions that is the Vidwan Bharat in terms of the how food and practices could be practiced for upbringing the children, including the immunity from the early stages. Every doctor would agree that this is need of the day. Our food has been contaminated with the processed food, maybe the fats and sugars and whatnot. So can we think about using our Vedic knowledge to get this immunity in our children? Can the awareness help also develop immunity through our own practices for the longevity of the healthy and long life in a very individual. 
And the third one is we have a rich source of knowledge through Ayurveda. Yes, I agree, all of us agree that there are both pluses and minuses and every fraternity does recognize that the allopathy is programmed, trained to treat the symptoms. However, Ayurveda, everyone knows that it tries to cure the disease. So there are both pros and cons we need to understand. And if we do it, we will not only have very good immunity today, but also whether it is the third wave or another pandemic in the future. So the message for all of us that we are communicating is, can we use and eat food as medicine? And we know the consequences. If not, the medicine will become our friend. Thank you, Kalanji. Yeah, Yalaji, thank you so much. I think, uh, um, you know, it was a great uh, opportunity to hear from some of the, uh, you know, what I would call the heroes of the moment, you know, people who have really stepped in. It's one thing to let the moment go by, another to step into that moment and really, really, really make a difference. And everyone here on this call has done that. Uh, we all owe them a, a deep uh, gratitude. Um, and let's continue uh, this work and, and uh, you know, uh, prepare for what is to come in terms of the third wave and so on. Uh, it is all very uncertain right now. And uh, the, the warnings about the children being affected, the third wave of the, of the virus and so on is, is, is pretty ominous. And I uh, pray to God that we come through all of this with lesser uh, loss than we've already incurred. With that, I would like to say thank you to all the participants, uh, all the panelists. Namaste. And, uh, uh, you know, I wish God's blessings are with all of you. Bhagavan's blessings are with all of you, and all, all the people on the panel. Namaskar. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste.